Hello? Hi there, my name is Gabriel Ortega. I spoke with you last night about some rental properties you guys had. Yes. Hey there. Uh -huh. Hi there, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Would you guys have a couple minutes? I would like to kind of go over a little bit of what I found out. Okay. What's up you guys, my name is Gabe Ortega. I'm a regular 28 year old, used to be automotive mechanic. Now I said used to be because if you guys saw my last video, I quit my day job to pursue my real estate dreams. Now this is the first day off that I have as an actual full-time real estate investor and I got something pretty excited going on. I found another rental property that I want to make an offer on and what I'm going to be showing in this video is an actual live call with the actual seller and I'm going to show you guys what I do on how to make an offer when you find a rental property and obviously everything before then. Just so you guys are aware, I am not a professional by any means at all. I mean, I can say that I've been investing for real estate for the last past five years and I've accumulated about 16 rental properties but in the grand scheme of things it's actually pretty small but I'm very proud of what I've done so far and I feel like if I showed you guys on how to buy a rental property and how to actually go about it you know who knows you guys might be in the same boat that I am so let's go with step number one is to actually find the property now obviously you can look on the MLS you can look on Zillow you can look on realtor.com there's a lot of places that you can find rental properties and actual just properties themselves for sale but one of the biggest things that's always helped me is Facebook. Every single property that I ever bought in my life, including my personal house here, I actually bought it on Facebook and it was on Facebook Marketplace or any of the for sale by owner pages that you would see in your area. So one thing that really helps making a decision if you should buy a rental property is called the 1% rule. Now it works for my area and it might work for your guys' area, but a lot of markets are different. Now the 1% rule pretty much means, it's very simple, it means if you rent a property for $1,000 a month, you're technically your purchase price should be around $100,000. Exact same thing if your gross income on that property is $2,000 a month, you guessed it, it should be $200,000 for the purchase price. Now that's a general rule of thumb and usually for the most part you'll always make money on a deal like that and luckily this property that I found does. Now right before our live video with the seller, I'm gonna be going over exactly what this deal is and how I'm getting a 67.4% return, cash on cash return, which if you don't know what that means, that is ridiculously good. Now step number two kind of, is you're gonna be looking up any information that you can find on this property just right before the get-go before you even contact the seller. You're gonna be looking up property taxes or anything else. Usually Zillow.com gives you all that information. So if you type in the address on Zillow, you can actually scroll down to the bottom and see where it says property taxes. That way it can help you run the numbers. And we'll be talking about running the numbers right after we talk about contacting the seller. So yeah, that's step number three, contact the seller. More than likely if you guys find the listing off market like on Facebook or something there'll be a contact page when I found this property I went ahead and contacted her through Facebook and I gave her my phone number and I asked please if you want to get in touch with me just give me a call at any time and point and I'll be happy to talk more about the property sure enough she sent me a text message and she said hey can I give you a phone call and of course I said yes okay now this is gonna be one of the biggest parts of the entire process is when you contact the seller now let me tell you something Thing. There's always a reason why people sell properties off market such as on Facebook or for sale by owner. There's a reason for that. Your job is to find out why. Because sometimes cash is not always king. Usually the person with the most cash doesn't always get the property. I know that's been my experience with a lot of properties that I bought. You know, there was at least three or four other people that had more cash than me, but because I cared about what the seller wanted to do with the property and what their intentions were, I could further help them into kind of push them into a direction that works for both of us. Now remember, if you want to make a win-win situation, you wouldn't want to get the best of a deal and they get a crappy end of the stick because more than likely they're not going to sell it to you guys you have to make sure you have a win-win next on our list is also another very important part it's called analyzing the deal or running the numbers when you run the numbers on a rental property there's a couple things that you have to take into consideration now there's two types that really fall into the category you have financing a rental property or you have paying cash for a rental property now trust me 
every single property that I have is finance. I love leverage. I love putting down you know, anywhere from 5% all the way up to 25% for a property, leveraging the rest, and obviously I still get cash flow every single month. Now, this is gonna be the first property that I'm actually paying cash for, and it shouldn't scare you because I'm actually paying $13,000 for this property. Hold on, it's, there's a reason why I'm explaining later, trust me. So for an example, if we were financing the property, let's just say a $100,000 property, you would obviously have 25% down, or maybe if you even buy it as a FHA loan, which is a first time home buyer, and you can get into the rental property for 3.5%, which is insane. Regardless, you're still gonna have a mortgage on this property. So what you do is you take the mortgage, the property taxes, and insurance. Those are your three fixed expenses every single month towards the property. Now next, obviously, you have CapEx, which is large repairs like roofs, AC, and then you have minor stuff like landscaping or any miscellaneous repairs, which usually I just tack on 5% because that's usually what it is. But that's if you use a mortgage, for example, if you put a down payment. Now this property I'm actually paying cash for. It's pretty much all the expenses, right, that we talked about except for the mortgage, which it's a little safer, but I'm able to do this because it's a lot cheaper price. Now that you guys ran the numbers, now you guys could actually figure out if it's something you wanna buy. And I'll explain the entire deal right now. I was on Facebook last night. Now when I contacted her about the property, she actually let me know that there was two properties on two separate lots. She was wanting to sell a the big house, which is a three bedroom, two bath. It's a 1950s home. She was wanting about 150 dollars to $160,000 for this property. Now the home number two was right next door. It was on its own separate lot, you know, and she was wanting to sell the big house and throw that little house in. Well, here's the deal. That little house is a manufactured home. Yes, it is a single wide trailer. Now hold on, I invest in real estate, which is houses, apartments. Now I'll be honest, I don't have a manufactured home. I've worked on them before and I know they're really maintenance. However, this one's a 1998 single wide trailer in really good shape, renting for 800 bucks a month. And after doing some research on this property, I was able to find out that it's roughly worth about $13,000. Now, I've came to the conclusion on that because I saw what other properties in my area are going for, but you have to take into consideration it's a manufactured home. Now, in my area, there's tons of those all over the place, so it justifies paying that amount, fixing it up if it needs anything, and then obviously renting it out. Now, just so you guys understand why I'm buying this property so cheap, if she accepts, is because manufactured homes typically go down in value, whereas stick home builds go up in value. Now, I'm definitely buying this property because of cash flow, not appreciation. As a matter of fact, if I get this property at $13,000, cash flow is gonna be $731 with a cash on cash return of over 68%, which for a real estate, that's insane. But that only happens with, honestly, really deteriorated homes or manufactured homes. Because remember, they don't go up in value, they go down. So now that you guys know the kind of the backstory of what this property is, how to go about it, how I went about it, I'm actually gonna be giving her a phone call and asking her and seeing if she's gonna separate both of the properties and seeing if I can just buy the single wide trailer for $13,000. Now, this could go bad, it could go great. You know, I have no idea, but the bottom line is you never assume what someone's gonna say and you never want to pass up on a deal because you're afraid of what they might say back. So let's give her a phone call and see what she says. All right, you guys, give me luck. Make sure I don't stutter too bad, okay? Hello? Hi there, my name is Gabriel Ortega. I spoke with you last night about some rental properties you guys had? Yes. Hey there, uh -huh. hi there, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Would you guys have a couple minutes? I would like to kind of go over a little bit of what I found out. Okay. Um, hang on just a minute. Let me uh, yeah. get my husband. Yeah, sure thing. Awesome. And so what I ended up doing last night is I went through a lot of this kind of information that I could find out on the property. And this morning I actually drove down there and just kind of looked at it myself. And for the most part, it you know, everything looks like it's in really good shape on the outside. Um, but there was a little bit of a problem that I found with the larger house. Um, so the larger house, it's obviously that 1950s home. And, you know, as far as a rental property goes, I usually follow what's called the 1% rule. 
um, you know, for an example, if it rents for, you know, 1500 bucks and the purchase price would be, you know, 150,000. Um, the issue is with the big house, I wouldn't be able to make the numbers work for that property. If you guys would work with me on just selling the trailer itself, that way you guys can focus more on the big house and, you know, not have to worry about the trailer. Um, the only deal is I looked up on Zillow and Realtor and a lot of other places and because it's obviously a manufactured home, obviously there's no really financing for a single wide, that's not ground set, so I would have to come out cash. However, I did find some valuations, but what numbers, if you guys were to sell just the manufactured home by itself, what would you be looking at? I haven't put a whole lot of thought into that. And I figured by actually, because I do know that they're on two separate parcel ID lots, which means, right. you know, you could just sell the single, you know, the manufactured home all by itself and not having to worry about, you know, trying to throw that one in because actually uh, if somebody came in with an FHA loan, they wouldn't even approve the property because it has two parcel ID lots. It would have to be one. So if somebody came in with an FHA loan wanting to buy the big house, technically, you know, the small house can't be really thrown in because it's a, you know, two parcel ID lots. So this way, I think I can, you know, maybe help you guys, you know, see if I can figure out a win-win situation for the both of us. But as of right now, it looks like the, you know, the trailer would be the only thing that I would be actually interested in as of right now. Okay, what kind of an offer were you thinking on that? So I looked up a lot of evaluations and obviously because it's a trailer, they don't go up in value, they go down, right? <laughs> but all, right. all valuation of about $13,000. I know that if this wasn't what you guys were looking at as far as evaluation or anything like that, I mean, I'm willing to kind of hear you out and see what you guys feel that you would sell it for. But obviously it would just have to make sense for me just because of the fact that, you know, like I said, it is a manufactured home. And in the beginning, I actually thought it was a double wide and you know, that was a hundred percent my bad. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there, there would be no way that we could even think about letting it go for that low of, a, of an amount. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay. Um, I, I mean, just the property alone would be worth more than that right now. And I realize that the, because it's a single wide, the value is, you know, not there as far as taking out a home loan. But I mean, one, one thought process that we even had on it would be like a owner carry, um, type of thing. Okay. And, we could get more out of it that way. So huh. I think that Alrighty. if we decided to split the two and not sell to the same potential buyer, both properties, then we would probably look at doing something like that instead. Okay. So I, so in the past, I have done a lot of seller finance deals. Um, I'm, so I'm very well experienced with the seller finance carry. Um, so what it really comes down to with that if you guys wanted to do something like that you know what price range range would you guys be looking at as far as the single family uh trailer i don't know um we, like like larry had said we haven't really put a whole lot of thought into doing it that way okay um just because this is kind of the first first process that we've had of oh. thinking about selling yeah. it and I know when we went and we talked to the realtor about it um he said that he thought that it would be like realistic for us to ask you know 60 70 thousand for it um and we we've definitely got yeah I mean according to to a bank or whatever they might not think that it'd be worth that much but if if somebody that really was wanting to you know, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a heads up, you know, more than likely if this sale was to happen, they would have to pay cash. And but, see, that's another reason why we were wanting to sell both of them, hopefully together to the same buyer, because what the, I see. the value would be for the house, it, I mean, to the, do on yeah. the house, the house would appraise for probably at least 165 yes. around in there. Yeah, and, and that's and actually what it would, came out as. And then that would uh -huh. that would leave you know what like fifteen thousand for the other one. So 
Um, that's why we were kind of thinking 180 for both. Okay. So what I'm getting at it because that's kind of what you know I base my evaluation on was exactly uh -huh. what I found on Zillow and the asking price what you guys wanted for the big house. Now I saw that the big house was roughly worth about 165, you know, 170,000, which you guys most definitely can get out of. And you know I subtracted that from you know the 180,000 that you guys wanted for both properties, and it came around uh -huh. you know the the 10 to 12,000 range. And when I saw that the valuation was around 13,000 on realtor.com, Zillow, and a couple of other places, you know, obviously that's how I came to my valuation. And at no time at point did I undervalue the property or anything like that. I was just purely going off of, you know, what I found. Right, right. Um, you know, and that's why I made that offer of $13,000 because it makes perfect sense. And, you know, you valued it right now at $15,000. So would that be this asking price that you guys would ask? Not selling it by itself, no. Okay. We hadn't even really thought about it yet. That's just, I mean, that's something that the realtor had okay. had kind of put that idea out to us. Uh -huh. And so we thought we would try it this way first. And then if it didn't work out, see what we could kind of come up with. But okay. Um, so we hadn't really put a whole lot of thought into that. Well, what it, if you guys could speak about it, you know, what I would really like, you know, like I said, I want to make sure that if I can do something, you know, where I can make it a win-win, I would be happy to. And if you guys would maybe talk to each other and see if, um, you know, what number works for you guys just for the single, uh, you know, family trailer. Um, and then if you guys could get back with me on a number and maybe I can see if I can, you know, finesse a couple more things and see if it's something for me. Um, but as of right now, that's kind of where I'm standing at. So we're just kind of curious, um, would you have an interest at all in the house itself? The big house? At a different price. Okay. So the big house, um, you know, I'm very, very experienced in older homes, you know, 1940s, 50s, and 60s. Like, like I said last night, we actually have a 1904 home, you know, that we've had for the last couple of years. And I know for a fact, you know, they do require a lot, a lot of extra care and attention. And it's very, very expensive. Um, that being said, there's just, I wouldn't be really interested in doing um, a deal on that property just because of the fact okay. that I know what kind of goes into it. Okay, sounds good. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much. I do appreciate every second of you guys' time. Thank you very much. All right, no problem. Thank you. Right, you have Bye. A, you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. <sighs> okay. So let's get this straight real fast. Um, it's a single wide trailer, okay? In my area, single wide trailers go from anywhere from two to four thousand dollars. Sometimes people pay you to take away a single wide trailer, um, so it just it doesn't make a lot of sense to spend more than what Zillow or anybody else is really appraising the vehicle, or I'm sorry, appraising <laughs> appraising the manufactured home. Um, I would love to to see what they have for an offer, but I asked them last night if they had a number in mind and to see if they could find something you know, that might work for them. Uh, but when I offered them, they just they didn't seem like they were very interested in the 13,000, uh, which is perfectly fine, no big deal. You're gonna be told no 300 times. And then after the 301 time, then you're probably gonna be told yes. Now this is the problem with a for sale by owner. The fact that it's a for sale by owner means that they don't know exactly the market. They can talk to the realtor. They said that their property was, was worth about 160 to 165,000, which they're 100 percent spot on. But they were wanting 180,000 dollars for everything. 180 minus 165 is 15,000. But just by the way that they were talking, they were not going to accept a $15,000 offer. Now, I'm sure they're wanting upwards of twenty dollars to $30,000 for their single wide trailer. And the acreage of land that it's on, it's about 0.1 of an acre. So it's not very much. And land is not very expensive where I'm from. And I really feel like, you know, this couple really feel like their property is worth more than what it might be, which is not uncommon for any for sale by owner. 
sometimes you get people that are wanting to sell quick and sometimes you get people that just, they don't mind holding on for an extra $10,000. Now, what I'm gonna do is just wait and see if she calls me back and I'll probably be following up with her tomorrow and to see what valuation that they gave the property and then I'll be doing an update on the next time that I speak with her. Maybe it might be something worth it, maybe it not be. But the fact is that it's a single wide trailer and you guys have to understand, you buy appreciating assets, not just assets. Liabilities take money from your pocket, assets puts money into your pocket. You wanna buy appreciating assets, which obviously this is an asset, but it's not appreciating because it's a single wide trailer. They go down in value. So that's the only bad thing about this whole ordeal. But I'm willing to risk that because of the cash flow. Now, trailers, in my area go for what I was asking for. Now I'm hoping that maybe she can come to the realization that I was giving her exactly what she wanted in a way, but it just it doesn't make sense and never go into a deal if it doesn't make sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little phone call of ours and a little bit on how to invest in your first rental property. Now remember, you're always gonna get told no, but just keep on trying, keep on trying to find a win-win situation for most people. And sometimes things just work out when you work hard enough. And uh, I'll be giving you guys an update video here soon. So just like that, I'll see you guys later. Bye.